No worries. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here and welcome to Theberton Senior College on this serious morning, actually. Um, with me is the uh, Police Commissioner, Grant Stevens, the Principal uh, of Theberton Senior College, and with uh, Eva uh, Canis Torrey, uh, and two students who uh, may uh, have a few words to say Mohammed and Bella. Um, today I'm very proud to announce. Uh, an exciting initiative where we will be uh, piloting here at Ferguson Senior College the first uh, direct schools pathway, SACE pathway into police. Um, it's a very exciting time and in fact there's never been a better time to put your hand up to choose a career in policing. Uh, in this year's state budget, uh, state government has allocated $94 million to uh, recruit across the next three years 900 police uh, and, in addition to that, 189 sworn police security officers. Um, but what we also want to see is pathways for young people. And here at Theberton Senior College, where we see an extraordinarily diverse cohort of students, particularly from diverse multicultural and humanitarian refugee backgrounds, uh, we also want to see policing as an uh, a exciting career option for all South Australians. Uh, I've got to admit, this one's pretty close to my heart as well. Uh, my dad was a refugee. Uh, he came to Australia in 1957 as a refugee from Hungary. And the first time in his life, he was 18 when he arrived, the very first time in his life that he could ever trust somebody in uniform was when he arrived in South Australia. And he looked, to our wonderful people in blue, our police, for trust, for care, for support. And that's not something that he could ever look forward to in his previous country. And I know that so many students here at Theberton Senior College, and in fact right across South Australia, may have that same experience. So through this pilot, we're incredibly excited to be uh, breaking down some of those barriers for uh, people who want to choose policing as a career will be providing some really exciting opportunities and support for them. And I really want to thank Ferguson Senior College and the leadership of Eva and her team uh, for uh, really being on the front foot, uh, supporting their student cohort with this uh, very exciting uh, opportunity. And they're known for it here. Ferguson Senior College has, has known and historically been an uh, incredibly important school for, for pathways, both SACE as well as uh, non-SACE based. So uh, I'll throw to Eva to talk about the work that she's undertaken and then to the Commissioner and of course anyone who's happy to take questions. Thank you. Good morning. Oh, oh, yeah, oh sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, what would you like to know? Pick it off by asking what, what could, could you see more students wanting to enter the police force after, you know, with this program and what's the current rate at the moment? Yeah, but we have many students, we have students who come to us not just from across the world but from across the three schooling sectors. And they can learn, we have lots of students who uh, let us know that they're interested in, in the police force as a future career pathway. It's one of the, a real challenge for young people because post year 12, what do you do, where do you go, how do you actually develop a skill set uh, that might help you be successful in, the, in the policing. We thought that um, there is a real
am enrolled in a SACE program. They've, they'll have five different SACE subjects so that the students are not tied to just one part of the in education. The students have choices. And so whilst they're being prepared for the police, they'll also be exposed to some other opportunities. to develop their, their interpersonal skills and other capabilities that are important to getting through a process. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Eva. I think Eva's done a really good job of explaining um, the relationship between SAPOL and Beverly Senior College and what the students will be provided in terms of opportunity to uh, work towards uh, that recruiting process uh, after they finish their, their education. This is um, this is one of many uh, steps we've put in place to address some of the recruiting challenges that uh, we're experiencing at the moment. Uh, unlike others that we're currently working on, this is uh, this is a longer term strategy where we see this is going to be embedded into uh, the curriculum within uh, Federal Senior College and, and other schools as well um, to provide that opportunity for younger people uh, to and um, people from uh, linguistically diverse backgrounds to uh, appreciate the opportunities that policing provides and and develop a pathway for them to be ready for that recruiting process. A big part of this uh, will be the opportunity to engage with uh, serving police officers and to build a, a proper understanding of exactly what the policing career is about, as well as preparing them for that process uh, when they're ready to enter into the recruit selection phase and hopefully see them in blue uh, at some point in the future. Is there potential to expand the program of the school? Oh, that's our yeah, plan. Uh, to, to, this is this is the first step in, in a long-term program, and uh, this will be made available to other schools as well. Um, but I think it's important to get it right first, and we're really grateful for the uh, the partnering uh, with the Senior College so that uh, we can implement it as a pilot, uh, work out the folks, and then uh, expand it more broadly. Thank you. 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 Thank you
just any other, are you still looking at incentives for customers from other states as well? Uh, we're not offering any specific incentives other than the fact that they get to live in South Australia and work for, I think, the, the best policing service in Australia. Um, we are uh, keen to recruit um, police officers from other jurisdictions because we're able to provide an abridged training program which puts them out onto the road more quickly. Um, and this is the whole purpose of uh, the work we're doing around accelerated recruitment is to um, fill the shortfall we have now, but build programs that will see us being able to bring people into policing into the future. Can you talk about the shortfall? Just about the latest information or update as to how many positions you do need to fill? Uh, we're about uh, 210 positions short of where we would like to be, um, and this has stemmed from a downturn in um, recruit applications and uh, an increase in our attrition rate. So you know, we do certainly have a challenge ahead of us, but uh, the program we're putting in place, we're confident we'll see us get back to our establishment numbers uh, by the end of 2024. And this, um, this program, whilst it won't deliver uh, potential recruits until the end of 2024, is certainly something that we're going to be relying on in the future to ensure that we can maintain that level of interest in policing as a, as a, as a career option for, for young people. What about anything to bring back um, some Police might have left the force or retired police. Are you looking at anything particularly towards the end of the year, maybe incentive or anything like that to bring back some of these police? Uh, we, are, we, we do engage with uh, people who have left policing. Um, there are some challenges with people who have reached retirement age um, in terms of the impact of their superannuation and, and re engagement with their force. It's not something that suits everybody. Uh, during COVID 19, we were quite aggressive in reaching out to. Um, former police officers and uh, it's fair to say that there was not a huge amount of interest in people returning to policing because of whatever direction they're taking. But we, we remain an, an option for people who leave policing to pursue other vocations uh, to come back if uh, you know, they've satisfied their desire to work in another field and want to come back to policing, our uh, door is always open and we do have a, an, a, an ability to transition those people back into policing uh, quite quickly because of their past experience. Can I turn your attention to Raylene Fogliata? She was obviously freed last night. Um, how disappointed are you that she was freed on bail given the seriousness of the charges against her? Oh, look, I won't, I won't comment on um, that particular aspect of it. You know, we have a process in place. Uh, you know, it is a, a matter for the, the, uh, the judiciary to make a determination on bail. They've considered all of the, the factors and they've made the decision to release that. That's a matter for the, the courts. Yeah. Ask how much police well, just because a person's on bail doesn't mean that they're, uh, that they're walking away from the allegations. Uh, we'll obviously investigate, we'll continue to investigate, and we'll continue to uh, proceed with the prosecution process. So yeah, that, that will occur anyway. The police work's not wasted. Do any reasons to be delayed between the grand bail and the grand bail? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, would you like the students at all? Just one more question. Yeah, on, uh, 
Absolutely. SA Prison Health, which is a SA Health um, um, responsibility doing an outstanding job caring for the health and providing their duty of care to people in custody, not just those who have been sentenced, but all those on demand as well. It's a very big body of work. Often it's, what, it's a body of work that the public don't see, the, the dozens and dozens and dozens of hardworking clinicians and health professionals in our prison system. They do a great job, I'm sure, they do a great job.
the match to the best that I do this. Uh, now is a great time to be doing that. But in terms of an additional recruitment, including lateral entry from both Australian and international jurisdictions, um, my request to the Commissioner is very simple. Don't leave any stone to it. And, and should there be a vast government uh, around that, that policing is, is a tough job. Uh, it's a tough job that is tempered by an extraordinary level of public support. Uh, and coming out of the pandemic news, uh, there was a very significant toll taken on our frontline workers, um, the least of which uh, those frontline police, many of whom would not in a lifetime have considered, would have considered that they would have joined police to be undertaking some of the roles that they were required to do through public service uh, during that pandemic. Uh, but matched with our additional recruiting efforts is a very significant body of work ongoing that police are undertaking regarding retention and continuing to make the policing I'll ask the Commissioner to provide some more details on this observation. set a future where we expect the average person to be serving for 40 years. Um, younger people are mobile with their jobs and, and you know, one of the biggest challenges we find in policing is that we train outstanding individuals who are employable, uh, who are the absolute uh, envy of other private agencies as well as government agencies and, and often uh, what we see is, is people for their own reasons making that decision uh, earlier than four years to be uh, choosing a different career. That is part of our business as usual moving forward and other jurisdictions are encountering that, that very same shift in the way that people are uh, not tying themselves to a job or a career for the rest of their life. Well, why is that? Wouldn't you want more experienced police who know oh, the people who know the area? Absolutely. It's not saying that we, we don't still want people in the world. It's a recognition uh, that people uh, right across the country, police and other uniformed personnel uh, are moving jobs as every other person is in every other job more frequently than they have in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Oh look, it's still being developed. It's minimal, I've got to say. It's, it's using existing resources. Uh, the $94 million that we've announced in the budget is largely around the additional uh, uh, um, an accelerated recruitment as well as the employment of 189 new sworn police security officers. Uh, this uh, uh, project will be funded internally within the existing resources that police dedicate to uh, recruitment and shooting. Okay, we're happy. All good. Thank you very much. Do you need um, 